There's 104 days of summer vacation And school comes along just to end it So the annual problem for our generation Is finding a good way to spend it Like maybe Building a rocket or fighting a mummy Or climbing up the Eiffel Tower Discovering something that doesn't exist hey. Or giving a monkey a shower Surfing tidal waves Creating nanobots or locating Frankenstein's brain It's over here! Finding a dodo bird, painting a continent, or driving our sister insane. Idiot. As you can see, there's a whole lot of stuff to do before school starts this fall. Come on, Barry! So stick with us, cause Phineas and Ferb are gonna do it all. So stick with us, cause Phineas and Ferb are gonna do it all. Mom! Phineas and Ferb are making a title sequence! Welcome back, Yellow Jackets. Or should we say goodbye? Let's take a walk one last time through these halls for the final Channel 4. First, Hayden and Luna swing it off with baseball. Then Christian and Jonah dribble us up a basketball mixtape. Then, Caitlin, Brooke, and Evie take us on the senior trip to New York City. And finally, Micah shows us how to dance the night away at prom. Practice, you know, normally show up, you know, get some stretching in, you know, none of the guys like to stretch, but, you know, I take my time out of the stretch, you know, I got to set myself apart. Most of our practices, we just start off, we just throw, uh, like most of the position players don't stretch at all for real, and then we just, we throw, then we go do either BP or like get infield work, and then that's pretty much it, yeah. Mr. Brian Alexander. Zach Kaitler. Zach Cates looks backwards. I don't care. Man. Zach. He said Mark. Because he works at a school. That's why. Mark. The thing about baseball, I have to say, is probably being around everybody. Freshman year, it's kind of iffy. But now that I'm a senior, I kind of like everybody, so it's much better. Like Sticks. I did say he was the one of the worst, but I do like him sometimes. I'm choosing uh, Colin Kim. Ooh, for real. Colin I think he's Kim. The best, like the most clutch. For yes, real. he he can work under he can work under pressure because <laughs> he can hit the ball. Forget about Player of the Year. I did it against Anderson. I said I won the game. Yeah, but before that, you be, you don't be hitting the ball. You popped up. That's literally I won the game. You popped up. I was supposed to be ball right, playing. Hold on. Okay. okay. Grant, I did it. Grant. I missed the whole game. From who won the game for us? I think I, I think I scored that run, too, from third. Yeah. You did. And but you all seven scored. innings. Bro, you wouldn't have scored if I didn't hit it. Going in the rope before a game, that was, um, it was something different, definitely something special, a feeling that you're not going to feel too many times, um, you know, and, you know, unfortunately, I'm a senior, so I won't get to feel that again, but it's one of those feelings that I'll never, I'll never forget um, for a lifetime. Go to lunch in the Jewish community. I won't tell on the bros for the immunity. Can't beat them next, they gon' ruin me. I'm the only one now that I do me. I got 
by the group trying to do me. My life like a movie, get hit in the water. I don't got put in no work, I send orders. These people got serious, no millions come flooring. I'm living by morals, we swiping and keeping no door. This floor, I'm young and I'm turning, I got the Lord. My baby, my will cost 250, I'm spurging. Got five million cash just in case if you merging. My young, he'll get away, they be purging. It happen like this, I ain't do it on purpose. I'm working my mood. Which one you working? I turned on my coupe, bought a coupe off of verses. I'm tired of these scribbles, I'm going at nurses and doctors and dentists. You started, I finished. I told you, we with it. My word is like gold. With all the fan support, it felt great. Um, if you've seen the other schools, nobody else had that type of support that we had from the county or from the city they were from. And that really gave us a momentum boost because like when we were down or when we felt like we was down and out, um, we always looked up in our section. We was like, oh my God, like look at, look at the section. And we felt like we couldn't let Versailles down. So that was, um, it felt great to have that type of support. It was cold. It was cold in there, definitely. Uh, going through the tunnels was cool. Um, it, it was a different feeling getting on the court and going out there for warm-ups and seeing everybody, like, starting to funnel in and everything. So that was fun. Turn it down, or she finna call a cop. We been plotting on the op, she the one who got the drop. Just a free quick fix to the hey, and it's okay. They gon' take me back to my old ways. I was trying to chill, pop the sales up, but since I got a deal. Make it anywhere. Yeah, they love me everywhere. I used to cop in Harlem. All of my Dominicanos right there up on Broadway. Pull me back to that McDonald's. Took it to my stash spot, 560 State Street. Catch me in the kitchen like a Simmons whipping pastry. Cruising down A Street, off white Lexus. Driving so slow, but BK is from Texas. Me, I'm up that bed stop. Home of that boy Biggie. Now I live on Biggie. Oh, Oh, 
going down. I'm yelling to my Wow, everybody looks so good at prom. You know what else looked good? The cars that me and Patrick saw at Cars and Coffee last weekend. Then Gavin informs us about the PIA project. Lastly, Jonah and Hayden take a deep dive in a rolling oven. I'm gonna make them an offer. This is actually my son's car. Uh, it's a 98 uh, C5 Corvette. It's had a little bit of engine work done to it, so forth, and we've put a little time into appearance and, and some cosmetic stuff and this, that, and the other, but just something that we do together that kind of gives us a good bond to uh, spend time with one another and try to make events and stuff like this. and and just gives us an opportunity to love the, the culture and, and the people around it. Fire, dude. Uh, review, review. See, yeah, this is so much better than what's over here. This is so much better. So much better. The Holy Grail. Not the Holy Grail, but it's just a very nice car. I like the R32s over there better, but this is still a very beautiful car. And I would love to find the owner so I can mug him for his keys and steal the whip. It's a 2021 911-4S. What made you want a Porsche? Uh, it's been my dream car from when I was little. Had a poster above my bed, so it's uh, awesome. always been a dream. Is this your first Porsche? No, we, uh, we've had a previous 911 that got totaled, and then uh, my wife has a uh, Macan S. Part two. Very nice. Very goofy little car. I really like these though. Uh, they handle really nice because it's a very small boxy car, short wheel frame. So a lot of people like to take these, rag them out, make them attack cars. Or Some people, I've even seen a couple of drag cars made out of these and they're really ridiculous. But yeah, this is the JDM cars. And somebody's two-stepping. We're going over there. Somebody's two-stepping. <laughs> <laughs> we missed it. We forgot to do the intro of us saying, oh my god. <laughs> That's the intro. Oh shit. Dude. Um, I drive a Mustang. It's a 2009 V6 automatic. Don't talk trash. I already, I already know. Um, oh, there's a 4GT. So much better. Oh. <laughs> no, turn the camera the only reason to come to Cars and Coffee. Pen Express. Express. A wide body C5? What? That smells heavily like That's the whip. That smells heavily. Channel 4, welcome, welcome to the Purpose in Action uh, piece. And um, this project is meant to help people with disabilities or otherwise um, just have a better workplace experience and one that is universal. You'll hear that word a lot. 
um, when we're talking about this. Um, a universal design for everybody in the workplace. Well, at the beginning of the year, I was approached by Tracy Francis, who is our Director of Special Education for the District. Um, she approached Mr. Richardson and myself and kind of told us that um, Woodford County had won this opportunity to be a part of this grant program. And um, so I would be involved as the special education lead within the building. The project. The special education team itself, um, well, in the beginning it was me and a couple of students and then from there it grew um, where we involved more teachers but we really wanted our students to be involved because we have students that have disabilities anywhere from a learning disability or a cognitive disability all the way to physical disabilities um, some mild some severe so we we had a range of students that we um, got permission slips to participate in the project and then we narrowed that group down to a select few that got to actually tour the facility and be involved in a much greater capacity. Um, I think it was something that started off small and um, I can now see the huge picture and the impact that it can have not just um, for our students but for our state of Kentucky and then with Parker Hannifin being a global company, they're in 49 countries, so just thinking of what great impact this can have across the world. Um, I'm excited for the students, I'm excited for Parker itself, because I think Parker is going to lead this charge in the United States and beyond as far as thinking outside of the box how they can increase their workforce and um, hire um, employees with disabilities and also allow them to be effective in the work environment and be successful. So, Mr. Richardson asked me to be involved in the project as a, a expert to go to the company, Parker, mm -hmm. to uh, look at, like, kind of get what their inside of the vibe looks like for people with disabilities. I was learning, even though this was very cocky. Uh, <laughs> It was, it was a very good moment to feel accomplished mm -hmm. when we won first place, it was nice. Yeah, thank you. What is the Purpose in Action Project? So we partnered with ETU Occupational Therapy Department, Kentucky Department of Education, and Parker Hannafin in Lexington, Kentucky to promote a safe work cell for people with physical, mental, cognitive disabilities. My role for Purpose in Action was one of the main team leads. And what I did was just designing a work cell also while working, while working around disabilities that would make my work cell inefficient. Um, I was also one of the main leaders for the Purpose in Action team and I also helped design and curate the functioning work cell that we won the project with. So Parker Hannifin teamed with the Kentucky Department of Education and reached out to our whole class to design a work cell that would make the workforce better fit for more people with disabilities. Um, I probably say my favorite part is just being able to share my experience working with this project and honestly another good one is winning a lot of stuff with this project. <laughs> it was really fun and exciting to hear our name or our number get called and us celebrating. Mm -hmm. Anything to add? Uh, yeah, just coming to the realization that even though something may be compliant with a ADA guideline for disabilities, it may not be accessible. Rolling Oven, um, uh, well, it means a lot of things, but most importantly to me, it was a place where I used to make money. Um, it's very needed, of course, but there was always something 
a little off. I'm happy that I'm not there anymore. I joined their operation, <clears throat> I want to say in August, um, sometime a little bit before the beginning of junior year, and I, no, senior year. My experience with rolling oven, honestly, it was overwhelmingly negative. Today, in the second edition of Woodford Mysteries, we're taking a look into another of our sales restaurants. Not Wagon Bones, but Rolling Oven. What's going on there? Why are they laying off their employees? Today, we're gonna take a look and we're gonna find out. We demand answers. All right, Channel 4, we're outside Rolling Oven. We're about to hit these managers with the, the tough questions. Why are the residents of Woodford County being laid off? Let's go. Sorry guys, uh, we ended our quota for realistic portrayals of panic attacks in Channel 4. Um, can't go back in there, but we're going to get back to the content soon and continue this investigation by any means necessary. What do you know about the layoffs of rolling up? I know that there's been some very profound smells coming through the vents, um, and we are connected, so I know that that could totally have something to do with the layoffs. Emma Dugan, library employee. Um, I actually wrote a rap. When I started working at Rolling Oven, um, it was part of a rap career that is, uh, it's in a long history of things Xavier and I, like Rolling Oven, didn't really put any effort into. Um, I guess I'll, I'll recite that for you now. Rolling up to the oven, I'm a brand new hire. Spit so hard, make those co-workers retire. I think what a lot of it was, plus like Xavier and I had very un, um, what, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Unpredictable schedules, like, just kind of hard to know when and where we would be. Cause God showed him flame, but he ain't show him fire. I'ma finish what he started, or you can call me a liar. Thought it'd be a good idea, I thought I'd make money, I thought I'd make friends, lifelong connections, that I'd learn, but it's really not like that at all. If they want smoke, I ain't gone deny them. If they want to F around, you can bet I'm a fry em. Guys, so chapter 1083 of One Piece dropped this weekend, this last weekend. But if they bring the heat, you can bet I'm a fry -em. Them oppressing our people in the One Piece world. What's up with that? Who are these holy knights, okay, that think they can belittle the people? I'm a walk away from the scene. Let the meds revive them. I get it. Uh, it's, it's a logical business decision. I think we're trying to kind of ramp up the idea of this being a a conspiracy theory, the real conspiracy theory, is how we were able to be employed here for that long anyway. I have a video here that won't load and it's just, it's me just doing nothing at my job. You can't see it, but it's me doing absolutely nothing. And that's what I did all the time. It was absolutely nothing. How did I work there for eight months? I don't know. Ellen Rigby picks up the rice in the church where the wedding has been. Lives in a dream, 
waits at the window, wearing the face that she keeps in a jar by the door. Who is it for? All the lonely people. Where do they all come from? All the lonely people. Where do they all belong? Father Mackenzie. Writing the words of a sermon that no one will hear. No one comes near. Look at him working, donning his socks in the night when there's nobody there. What does he care? All the lonely people. Where do they all come from? All the lonely people. Where do? Wow, Rolling Oven is clearly about more than just pizza. I hope those guys find a new job this summer. You know who had a pretty good idea of what to do with their summer? Elijah and crew get pretty steamy on the road. Then we let Eli cook up something new when he had an interesting run with some asparagus. Last, Owen, Colin, Elijah, and Garrett set some parents straight in the parking lot. I'm just so hungry right now. Dude, I wish we could have a taco. A taco? But we're in the hot tub. Well. Let's just take the hot tub with us! Right on! Alright, we, uh, we're uh, filling this truck up with water. Oh, um... Turn your phone It's a little cold. <laughs> Excuse me? I'll be right with you. Okay. Can I get a Baja Blast and a uh, chicken quesadilla? I'll take another chicken quesadilla too. And uh, two Doritos Locos Tacos. They have those nachos. Can I get a water too? Yeah. What else? Can I get a water? What else? Can we get another water? Another large Baja Blast. Another large Baja Blast and two Cinnabons, please. Yeah, and we're gonna get for free. Yeah. <laughs> I do want to get in. It's not as hot. I like Taco Bell. Oh. Yes. It's nice, How's it going? It? It's great. Oh. Woo. You having a blast? Oh, I'm having a Baja blast, baby. Oh, 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 and like miss everyone. <laughs> great experience. Great experience overall. Why does everyone look so angry? Yeah, Daddy. I'm thinking more happy. Because they're not in here. I know. Everyone's mm. so mad when they're driving. Because they're not in here. They're a bunch of teenage boys. They're not that cool. Look at this logic. It was the best experience of my entire life. I loved every moment of this. Look, we got a bunch of teenage boys here. Just. All like, oh, well, I guess not half naked, but if they took their shirts off, maybe pants, and that'd be better. But it's kind of heaven right now, for real.
secure handshake. Awesome! Let's get inside. My mom's making us dinner. Come on in, come on in. Thanks, man. Ready for some grub? I am. Mom! Supper! Thank you, Miss Carmichael. Oh, man. Let's chow down. Mom, you didn't even cut it! Sorry about that one. It's okay. Bro, asparagus again? I know. Money's hard to come by in the Carmichael household. Look, man. Okay. <laughs> it's just, asparagus is all we eat anymore, you know? After a while, I, mean, I can get kind of sick of it. I hate it! I thought it was really good! No, it isn't! And your mom is so nice! She isn't she nice She took all, all that time to get asparagus for us! She's an awful woman! She's the reason we're poor! Ah, stop! Shoot! I'm gonna beat you! You're not my real friend! I hate you! Maybe we aren't even best friends! Shut up! I'm sorry. Stay gone! Things are happening in this town. A UFO? No way. Eli, we have to fight for our house. I don't know if there are more of these things. Let's go fight them. Perfect. Huh. 
I guess asparagus is good after all. I guess you're right. <laughs> It starts with one thing. I don't know why. It doesn't even matter how hard you try. Keep that in mind. I'm designed this rhyme to explain in due time. All I know, time is a valuable thing. Watch it fly by as the pendulum swings. Watch it count down to the end of the day. The clock ticks life away. It's so unreal. Didn't look out below. Watch the time go right out the window. Trying to hold on. Didn't even know. I wasted it all just to watch it. Here at Channel 4, we like to joke around with skits and comedies, but every now and then, we like to tackle hard-hitting news that affects the entire school. For decades, parents have been skipping the drop-off line to drop their kids off in the student parking lot. This slows down and annoys student drivers and has been doing so for years. Today, we hope to shed light on the problem and hopefully put an end to this madness. I'm walking through the parent drop-off line. This is where parents should be dropping off their kids instead of in the back in front of all of the student drivers. Let's talk to one of them and see what makes him do this. <laughs> I'm here with... Brittany Phelps. And you're the mom of... Kate Phelps. So why do you park here in the parent drop-off line? Um, so that I can be there early to get my kid. <laughs> What makes you uh, not want to go behind the school and skip Ooh. the line? Ooh, um, because that's not the right thing to do. Every day, parents stop in the most inconvenient spaces for students. Why are you parking here? Because I can. Uh, what makes you better than the parents that go and park in the uh, parent uh, drop-off line? Do you see my luxury sports car, man? Who do you think you are? <laughs> hold this, hold this. Next year, the parents will learn their lesson. Aw, uh, I'm gonna miss you all next year. Aw, uh, same, but let's take a look back on some memories with friends. Then, Nick, Hannah, and Samantha catch us up with some seniors and what they're gonna do after graduation. Next, Luke and Kendall capture some senior memories. Lastly, Emma and Lydia have a special video for the seniors. <laughs> I'm Jillian Case. I'm Diana Sharp. Luke Vandenbroek. My name is Riley Suddeth. Emma Bauer. I'm Eliza Knuckles. My name is Reese Nichols. My name is Sophie Lester. I'm Kylie Fortney. I'm Cora Robinson. I'm Emma Henson. I'm Jonah Hall. And we have been friends for 10 years. Since sixth grade. Since sixth grade. Eight years. Eight years! 16 years. Our first memory was probably a dance competition in Dayton, Ohio. I would say my first memory is a dance competition. Um, my first memory of Riley would have to be sixth grade um, lunch. She was just sitting with her with her crew. My gals. 
<laughs> and I, uh, I just pulled up one time and I plopped myself down and the rest is history. <laughs> No, that's just history. <laughs> My first memory of Luke is it's not like we weren't really friends because, like he said, we didn't like each other in elementary school, but it kind of like tells the tale as almost like <laughs> one might say. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> one time at ETC, he um, fake threw up in a trash can because he wanted to go home. And um, that just says a lot about him. And then I went around telling everyone that his appendix burst for the second time. Okay, my first memory was when we were in sixth grade art class. <laughs> and I was sitting at the other table. I didn't really know anyone. And I look over and I was like, Eliza looks like the meanest person ever. But then I got to know her and she was a cool gal. That's a, my, like my first memory of Emma was also we were in sixth grade art class. And we were making like, what was it? We were making the books with like, we made our own books, pretty much, that we were like able to color in and stuff. And I saw Emma's and hers was all about gymnastics. And I was like, oh my god, she's so cool. She does gymnastics. <laughs> That's really it. OK, I think our first memory was the eighth grade trip in Chicago. We got to hang out a lot on that trip, and it was pretty fun. My first memory of Kylie is when I moved here to play softball in fifth grade. And she was like my first friend on the team. And she always made me feel so welcome. And we've been friends ever since. OK, so my first memory is probably when me and Jonah were outside. Uh, we, were, we were wrestling. And Jonah got a new white soccer jersey. And I pushed him on the ground. And I would go inside because Jonah was crying. And his, his dad comes over and knocks on my door and tells me I got a grass stain on his shirt. And, uh, I've never been forgiven since that day. My favorite memory from our friendship was definitely going to Disney together. My favorite memory from our friendship would probably be all the years of dance we've had, going to Disney, of course, mm -hmm. and all the lake visits. Yes. <laughs> Like, I think my favorite memory with Luke is probably like the entirety of Big Fish because that was one of the most difficult like show experiences I've done just because we had like a lot of like there were just a lot of roadblocks and you know with the random windstorm that moved our show a whole weekend anyway it was just like a really um, it was t it was rewarding but it was tough and part of what made it easier is having Luke there right by my side right by my side <laughs> okay my favorite memory is <laughs> I don't even know what we were laughing about, but we were both sitting in my bed and Emma started laughing so hard and like choked on her eyes or something and just threw up all over my bed. And I have a metaphobia, so I was like freaking out. And I ran into my mom's bedroom and Emma came in still laughing and I was like, clean it up. Clean it up and then she put everything in the washer. My favorite memory of us um, together was when we went to the Capitol this past fall and just, we ran around and rolled down the hills. <laughs> okay, my favorite memory with Cora is our senior softball spring break and spending the week together and having so much fun. My favorite memory is probably this game me and Emma created called Soccer Touchdown. It was like rugby basically, but with like soccer ball and soccer goal and you could just tackle each other and we had a lot of fun and surprisingly nobody got hurt because it was just a free for all. But yeah, it was super fun. Advice to other friends or friend groups I would be would just be to be honest with each other. There's no need to lie. Just be straight up with each other. Advice that I would give to other people would be be there for each other, have your back, um, and just to be honest and loving to each other all times, always. Always. My advice to other friends would have to be that always be there for each other even if you're at a distance and just always check in on your friend even if you don't see them every day. I don't know, like, take time to be with them, like, actually try to plan out things and don't just go, like, weeks without talking to someone because then obviously you're not gonna last very long. Yeah, and never forget to, you know, like, send a TikTok or two. <laughs> yeah, away. just send 30 TikToks in a row without <laughs> having the other person respond. That's also great. <laughs> Maybe Snapchat me <laughs> once in a while. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got money on my mind, I can never get enough. And every time I step up in the field, To the class of 2023, thank you for making this last year and these last four years absolutely amazing. I could not be more proud in each of every one of us, and I can't wait to see what we do with our journey in life. With that being said, here are the seniors' plans after graduation. I'm here with Leslie Staten and Maddie Robinette. And what are your all's plans after high school? I am going to Moorhead to major in education. 
I'm going to Eastern Kentucky University to major in elementary education. My plans are attending the University of Louisville and pursuing pre-med, majoring, majoring in biology. Um, I'll be going to Moorhead State University where I'll be getting a major in uh, history education and I'll be having a minor in trombone performance. After high school, I'm going to go work at Best Buy. I'm going to go to UK and become a mechanical engineer. Um, I plan to attend Asbury University and I plan on majoring in biochemistry. Do you have any friends from Woodford going to Asbury with you? Yes, my good friend Reese is actually going to Asbury with me. Alright, what's the next question? Um, I'm attending Wake Forest University in North Carolina. I'm attending Center College. All right, and what do you all hope to achieve at college? Um, hope to make new friends and new places, people from all around the world, so. I hope to get into the theater world and more into the art world, so I can become a costumer and get into costume designing. What are you hoping to achieve by attending college and majoring in pre-med? I am hoping to achieve getting into medical school and then going into residency for anesthesiology. What do you hope to achieve during your time at college? Um, I hope to achieve my double certification in elementary education and special education. What do you hope to achieve? A good GPA. <laughs> I don't know. Um, to get through college with a good GPA and get my, be able to teach elementary kids. What do you hope to achieve by attending college? Um, I hope by attending college it will set me up to attend dental school one day and hopefully become a pediatric dentist. How will attending college help your step towards the future? Um, well, without college I can't get into medical school or go to <laughs> residency, so. What was it like applying to college? Um, so talking, you're talking to the person who applied um, the day the deadline was due, um, December 1st, so don't do that. Um, try to like have stuff planned in advance, talk to teachers for like letters of recommendation. Um, just try to make sure like you're prepared, don't be like me. It only worked out because people actually like gave a crap. Uh, for me, whenever I applied, I, uh, I, I did it like in August, so I applied to UK, UofL, all of the stuff. So like if I were you, I would apply early. That uh, way you have a guarantee and you might have a better chance of getting scholarships. And then what advice would you give to upcoming seniors? Um, enjoy every moment of your senior year. That sounds really cheesy and cliche, but there are times I wish I had enjoyed school a little more, because, especially now that it's almost over. Thank you. Any deadline you have for scholarships or college admissions, pretend the deadline's two weeks earlier and work towards that deadline so that way you never miss anything. Um, yeah, going on what she said, just work on it early and don't push it back. Just do the work. Don't get behind or you are going to be in a tough place because it's hard once you get behind. Don't get behind and just cherish every moment because it's so emotional. Your last week. <laughs> no, not the tears. No, because I'm already going to start crying. With graduation nearing, Kendall and I thought it would be a great idea to go and get some messages for you seniors. We went around Woodford County and got a couple messages from some elementary school students, some middle school students, and some familiar faces at the high school. Uh, my message to underclassmen would be to push boundaries because most of the time you're going to get away with it. Um, stay as involved as you possibly can with the school and all the sporting events. Uh, do your work like I always did and uh, make sure your, your GPA stay above 3.0 like mine is. And uh, just stay blessed up and just enjoy the little moments. Do what you want in life. Don't let nobody tell you you can't. And don't ever say I can't do anything. That's my message. Don't drink and drive. Don't be corny like Aiden. Throws a cornball. Uh, really try in school. Bro, you've been here for five years. Let's, let's just graduate on time. Man. My goal is graduating and I'm chasing it. Graduate on time. On time. What's your message to all the people who strive to graduate early? Uh, my message is to uh, always try and uh, keep your head up. I am so happy for you guys. I'm so proud of you. I cannot believe how old you are and you're gonna do so wonderful in life. You guys were my favorite class of all time ever. You were my first sixth grade class and I just am so happy for you all. I miss you so much and I hope that you do amazing and wonderful things. Best of luck in the future. One of the best classes I ever had. Um, I did have two seniors for three straight years. 
They're now free birds flying on their own this year. So shout out to um, Kylie Fortney and Kristen Murphy. Class of 2023 is really special to me because my first year teaching here at Woodford Middle School, they were sixth graders. So I got to see them work through the middle school. And then as friends of my daughter Logan's, I've seen them um, go through high school and grow up and uh, succeed alongside her. And, and it's just been really nice. I've really appreciated all of her really, really great friends. Um, but a message to Logan specifically is just, I'm just so proud of you. I hope I never embarrassed you when you were in middle school, uh, but you're an incredible human and I can't wait to see what lies ahead for you. Thank you so much for all the personality you brought to the middle school in your time here and best of luck in your future endeavors. I love you guys. Good luck class 2023, especially all the volleyball players that I met last year with my sisters. Live long and prosper. Good luck class of 2023, especially my sister, Dawson Sully, go Huskies. Congratulations you all, you made it through all of school. I want to give a shout out to all of the seniors, Reese Nichols, Maddie Robinette, Olivia Cassidy, and Kaylee Pop. love y'all so much. And shout out to Lydia Johns, love you. I just want to say congratulations, you made it through school and there's a lot to look up to. I just want to say congratulations and I love you Kylie. I see great, great things in their future. I want to give a shout out to uh, my boonies. <laughs> And also my three girls, who I still have their picture on my um, desk, Lydia and uh, Kirsten and um, Emily. Those are my three girls. And um, I just really, really, really uh, loved this particular class and I'm so happy to see what you all will do in the future. Be empathetic like they usually were as well as to be adaptable because there's a lot of things that life can throw at you and you just got to roll with it and like figure out the best way to um, to solve it to make sure that you aren't jeopardizing like yourself and like your morals and ethics. I just want to say congrats we are all proud of you we miss you we hope that we get to see you out and about in the community and we are so proud of all your accomplishments I love seeing you all and just how much you all have grown and you've truly made us really proud we love you. Everything is out there for you. Um, don't stop until you have experienced everything you want to experience. Go to the party, go to the dance, go wherever because you can't be 47 and go back and do your 8th grade dance. You can't be 47 and go back and do your prom. You can't be 47 and go back and do that hiking adventure when you were in college. So do the things. Do all the things. You know, go live life and d live it and make it all a learning experience and, and do it without regret. Um, everything, even if it doesn't turn out right, is there for a reason and a purpose. And it changes who you are and it inevitably makes you who you are as an adult. And I say do the things. And I hope you all do all the things. Um, you're so creative and inquisitive and intellectual and just a joy to have. So I wish you the very best in whatever you decide to do, whatever endeavors you want, you go, you, you go for. I just want to say congratulations, and I am so excited for you all and the things that are um, ahead for you guys in your future. Um, it was so much fun having you all as first graders, and I have our first grade class picture so some well-known we've got quite a few of you that are still here um, and so I had so much fun that year it was just a fun class and um, I really enjoyed each of them and so I'm just excited for all that you all are about to embark on um, and your futures and so I just want to wish you the best of luck um, I I do feel a little special close to this senior class because they started Woodford County Schools the same time I did. Their kindergarten year was my first year here. Um, and I've heard a lot about them over the years and I'm gonna be sad that they're not in the district anymore. Um, and I do have one special senior and that's uh, my daughter, Samara. And uh, I wish her the best of luck and all the stallions. Remember, once a stallion, always a stallion. Oh, I'd just like to say congratulations on your graduation and uh, good luck in the future. Good luck to all the seniors but specifically to my Southside friends, I will always forever remember you as my Harmony High crew because it was just the best show and the best combination of kids and just one of my favorite, favorite memories. Just remember, once a stallion, always a stallion. I hope you do great in the future. Um, I hope they do good in college. Hey seniors, just wanted to tell you how much I loved you, and it's been two great years, and I just wish you all the best. Mwah. Seniors, I want to congratulate you on your all the 
awesome things you're gonna do when you graduate. You have been one of my favorite groups. Um, you were my last group to do prom with, my last group to go to New York with. Um, you are resilient because you were freshmen when COVID hit. You've been through how many principals? I will say you are strong, you're resilient, and you guys are gonna kill it. I'm super proud of you and I love you. You guys get to college, I've been there, so please go to class. Uh, it's a little extreme, it's a little hard, especially for the athletes. Uh, we got 5 a.m., so you guys need to uh, be productive. Um, and be ready to uh, work hard. Hi seniors, class of 2023. We just wanna say party on Wayne, party on Garth. Dear lacrosse seniors, thank you for the last ride. You peaked in high school. Oh, uh, and my message to seniors is um, good luck whatever, whatever exams you're doing and um, uh, good luck with the colleges and stuff like that. And uh, good luck with your sports and whatever you're doing. My message to the seniors is um, be safe in college, um, do all your schoolwork, and uh, make sure, um, yeah, let me just wrap it up. All right, my, my message to the upperclassmen is uh, like to go in college and be great. Like, yeah. Good luck, seniors, you're gonna do great. God be with all y'all. Make it up. <laughs> Have fun and it won't matter in 40 years. How about you? Stay loyal and don't cheat ball to you fall to everybody that went to the school i want to see y'all success all right i want to i want to see y'all chase that bag all right we out love y'all boys um i'm abby moffett here with me a van here
hands wrapped around my finger And it's so quiet in the world tonight Your little eyelids flutter cause you're dreaming So I tuck you in, turn on your favorite night light To you, everything's funny You got nothing to regret I'd give all I have, honey you could stay like that Oh, darling, don't you ever grow up Don't you ever grow up Just stay this little Oh, darling, don't you ever grow up Don't you ever grow up It could stay this simple I won't let nobody hurt you Won't let no one break your heart No, no one will desert you just try to never grow up And never grow up You're in the car on the way to the movies And you're mortified your mom's dropping you off at 14, there's just so much you can't do And you can't wait to move out someday and call your own shots But don't make her drop you off around the block Remember that she's getting older too And don't lose the way that you dance Around in your PJs getting ready for school Oh, darling, don't you ever grow up Don't you ever grow up just stay this little Oh darling, don't you ever grow up Don't you ever grow up It could stay this simple And no one's ever burned you Nothing's ever left you scarred And even though you want to Just try to never grow up Take pictures in your mind of your childhood mm -hmm. Memorize what it sounded like when your dad gets home Remember the footsteps, remember the words said And know your little brother's favorite songs I just realized everything I have is someday gonna be gone so here I am in my new apartment in a big city They just dropped me off It's so much colder than I thought it would be So I tuck myself in and turn my night light on
what's um. Oh. <laughs> Let's go. Wait, wait. I, I need to speak my truth. Ready? Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> 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 One, two, three, taco shop! Yeah. Ha!